Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Retina Roundup. I am Dr. Hena Javedi, Fellow in Vitreo Retina and Ocular Oncology and I bring to you the top five articles published in the recent month. The first article we shall discuss is a longitudinal study investigating the predictors of myopic macular degeneration amongst the Indian and Malay Singapore population. This study included over 2,000 myopic eyes with a follow-up period of 12 years. They found the 12-year cumulative incidence of myopic macular degeneration to be 10.3%. Tessellated fundus was a major predictor of myopic macular degeneration. In adults, 1 in 10 eyes experienced progression during the study period. Age, axial length and spherical equivalent had good predictive value and were independent risk factors for progression. Next, are Mount Fiji and chronic central serous chorioretinopathy related? Let's find out. In this retrospective multicenter cohort study, the authors have described a novel OCT finding, the Fiji sign, which is seen in chronic CSCR patients in whom there is a higher chance of spontaneous SRF resolution. A line was drawn from the innermost part of the ellipsoid zone to the Brooks membrane. The base of the triangle was drawn halfway and perpendicular to this line. The two legs of the triangle were drawn from the external limiting membrane at the apex of the SRF to the two points where the baseline intersects with the ELM. The Fiji sign was then considered to be present when the ELM was positioned either exactly overlapping the two legs of the triangle or under these lines. So this study compared 38 treatment-naive CSCR patients with spontaneous SRF resolution with 38 age-matched and gender-matched controls. They reported that the Fiji sign was more frequently seen in the study group and the median time from baseline visit to spontaneous resolution was three months. The authors suggest that this sign can be used to actively monitor patients for spontaneous resolution of fluid. The next study is a retrospective study evaluating the effect of intravitreal injection of tissue plasminogen activator and gas versus sparse plana vitrectomy as first-line treatment for subretinal hemorrhage. The study reported that hemorrhage was displayed in a similar percentage of patients in the TPA plus gas group and almost 80% of these patients were able to avoid sparse plana vitrectomy surgery. The outcome in terms of visual acuity was significantly better in the injection group. Thus, an image at office procedure in these cases can be considered with good outcome. The next article studies the association between visual outcome and the presence of findings of uncertain significance by optical coherence tomography in patients with neovascular age-related macular degeneration, that is type 1 and type 2 CNVM, before and after loading dose with ranivizumab. They described the following non-specific findings. Onion sign, multi-layered hyperreflective bands similar to the multiple layers seen in an onion were seen between the RPE and Brooks membrane. Precoroidal clefts were defined as hyporeflective spaces sandwiched between the hyperreflective RPE and Brooks membrane along with posterior bowing of the Brooks membrane. Intraretinal and subretinal pseudocysts were optically empty spaces without the presence of any hyperreflectivity at their borders. Choroidal caverns were choroidal hyporeflective spaces with the absence of hyperreflective borders. The analysis revealed a higher letter gain in those with that demonstrating the onion sign. The presence of pre-choroidal cleft, intraretinal and subretinal pseudocysts were associated with lower visual gain. Therefore, the onion sign can be a biomarker of good prognosis. The cause and mechanism causing neuronal death and the potential for revival remain poorly defined. This exciting new study focuses on the revival of light signaling in postmodern mouse and human retina. The authors used the human and mouse retina as a model of the central nervous system to demonstrate swift decline of neuronal signaling and identify conditions for reviving in vivo-like transsynaptic transmission. They identified two key modifiable factors 
that is hypoxia and acidosis, which may be able to extend the time window for recovery of neuronal transmission. The light evoked responses in human macular photoreceptors in eyes removed up to five hours after death were also recorded. The results showed inability to consistently restore B waves. However, in eyes from organ donors with death to enucleation delays under 20 minutes, B wave was consistently recorded, specifically from the peripheral retina sample. This could open up the prospect of vision restoration using photoreceptor or macular transplantation from organ donors. This study definitely has broad applications, raising questions about the irreversibility of neuronal cell death and providing new avenues for visual rehabilitation. So that's it for this month. Thank you for tuning in.